Hello Mindful Foodies, Inga from Health Origins here. So today I'm going to show you how to make these delicious vegan fish fingers using soybeans. So let's begin. I've got my food processor. We're going to add one cup of cooked brown rice. So this is short grain rice. It's best to use short grain because it's a more sticky rice. It will help to keep all of this together. Then I've got a third of a cup of um, fried onion. So this is a small onion chopped uh, or medium to small onion chopped in, in dry fry for about seven minutes. You don't need any oil. Um, so just a fried onion, a third, about a third of a cup. Then we're going to add half a cup of um, ground almonds. And then... Um, I'm going to add all of the spices so we're going to need a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder we're also going to add half a teaspoon of smoked paprika just a little bit we don't want it to color it too much then a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper. You could use black pepper, but I'm keeping it to white to keep the, the, uh, the color. Then we need half a teaspoon of salt here. And then we're gonna add one tablespoon of miso paste. So this is um, white miso paste, but you could use um, kind of like light brown miso paste as well just obviously try and keep it light because we don't want um, it, the mixture to be dark to resemble our vegan fish fingers so I'm gonna put my lid on and we're gonna pulse it a few times so I'm gonna now scrape the sides so you still want to see bits of kind of rice and you want to have a little bit of texture here still. And then we're going to add our one and a half cups of um, cooked soybeans. And we're going to pulse this a um, couple more times. You don't want to over um, do it with the um, beans because they're quite soft, so they go mushy very quickly. So maybe it's, you know two or three pulses, and that's all it's gonna need. So I've done about four kind of second pulses or half a second pulses um, where to the point where I can't see full beans but yet I can still see little bits of beans so I've just um, transferred the, the the mixture into my bowl and I've tasted it and it needs a little bit more salt so I'm going to add a few grains here so always taste your mixture to make sure it's spiced nicely and that there's enough salt in there and then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of tapioca starch um, just to stiffen up the mixture a bit. You could use corn starch or also arrowroot as well or potato starch. So I'm going to give it a good mix. Oh, actually, I forgot. And the main uh, ingredient that we need to make this taste fishy, of course, is... Um, seaweed. So this is a nori sheet that I toasted in my um, under my grill for about 20-30 seconds. So until it became quite brittle. Um, and I'm gonna just actually I think it needs a little bit more toasting because it needs to be quite brittle. So I'll, I'll put it in for another five seconds or so just so that it's kind of like easily breakable. Obviously, be careful not to burn these because it's very easy to burn these in the um, under the grill. Also, um, it, you can use kelp flakes as well. So any kind of seaweed um, broken into little bits or flakes. So I'm gonna just flake that into my um, 
my mixture. You want small pieces, as small as you can get them. We'll see maybe half of the nori sheet will be enough. I'll just mix it up and then taste test it. Another uh, way to impart fishy flavor, I just thought about it, if you don't want to see bits of the seaweed in here, what you could do, you could um, kind of soak your soybeans with um, a seaweed water. So, you know, if you, if you soak um, some wakame or other kind of dried seaweed and the water from it, um, would then if you soak the beans or you know if you add a bit of seaweed with your beans to kind of soak them for a little while um, hopefully the beans would pick up that fishy flavor so perhaps that could be another way of of doing it it doesn't taste too fishy for me so I'll put the whole whole nori sheet in to make sure we do get that fishy flavor coming through I think kelp flakes would probably be better in this instance because they would give out kind of, they're easier to use, they're already kind of small and you could even grind them finer in, in the spice grinder um, and then mix it in. These kind of don't have a nice kind of look or distribution, but you know, you can use it in a pinch. So the mix is ready now. I'm gonna prepare our crumb mix. So this is one cup of cornflakes, so organic cornflakes that I used, and we're gonna put half a teaspoon of onion powder and half a teaspoon of garlic powder in there, as well as uh, some salt. Actually, it'd be easier just to put about maybe half a teaspoon or a little bit less. And I'm gonna just mix that up. So I mix this mixture um, and I've got my tofu um, kind of making box, part of my tofu making box, but any kind of smallish plate or a container that you know, you, you'll be putting in your fish fingers to coat will be, um, will work. And um, now uh, to form our vegan fish fingers, I'm gonna need to wet my hands a little bit. So yeah, so just a little bit wet so that it helps me form um, these vegan fish fingers without it sticking to my hands too much and then just the usual kind of fish finger shape you don't want to make them too large or too thick yeah so that seems about right and then I'm gonna drop it into my crumb mixture and Coat it on all sides. And voila, you've got yourself a vegan fish finger. So I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the batter. If your hands get dirty, uh, then wash them again and then start over. I actually found an easier way of making them. So first of all, you roll it into a kind of about the right sausage shape you need and you don't flatten it yet. I'm gonna just drop it, roll it into my uh, crumbs like that and then you take it out and then you can flatten it even on here. You can just finish off flattening your fish finger. It's a, a cleaner way of doing it actually. So you roll it in a sausage shape first, drop it in, roll it, and then flatten it on the tin. So my sausage shape, in it goes, I roll it round, dab it on both sides, and then I'm gonna flatten it here on, on the tin. These are ready to go into the oven now. Um, I preheated my oven at 200 degrees Celsius and I'm gonna bake these 
for about 35 minutes and turning them um, after about 25. The vegan fish fingers have finished baking. I'm gonna let them cool just a tad, plate them and we're gonna taste test them. Now on to taste testing. So we've got these vegan fish fingers, hopefully, that taste like fish without actually having any fish in them. Made from soybeans. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so I've got a bit of ketchup here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Fing, uh, fingers catch up here. Catch up. Um, yeah, so we're gonna give it a go. Hmm. A little bit of fishiness coming out. The, the initial bite, much. you get a little bit, and then yeah. it kind of dissipates. I think for me, it's kind of more Ooh. the other way around. Oh no, actually, yeah, I'll just get a bit at the end as well, when um, you, you yeah. swallow. So, mm. yeah, can definitely taste a bit of fishiness. So these are a success. I think if you used kelp um, kelp flakes, that would be even better, because with the Nori sheets, it's not like too strong of a fishy flavor, mm. but... Um, I wondered where that was coming from, the Nori sheets. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, you can see it has bits of of the nori sheet, you know, mm. but, but yeah, when it's covered in crumb, it, it looks good, you can't see it kind of more or less from, from the outside, but then when you bite in, you get that mm. burst of kind of fishiness. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think if you try this, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. If you're new here, welcome and subscribe for more videos as always on Wednesdays and Sundays. And remember, food is fuel. So be mindful of what you put in the body. Until next time. Bye guys.